Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Mark C. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up today, I'd like to try to clarify a bit of the confusion around the new Austin made Model Y with 4680s. Looking at the charging curve, we should absolutely go over the C rate. This is an important topic that we all should know and be able to explain to others as we move toward more electrification. Just think of the C rate as the charge or discharge rate relative to the battery's maximum capacity, so it does factor in the size of the battery. To understand and calculate this, it's always easiest to work from the base, which is going to be 1C. This just means that in one hour, the battery will charge or discharge. So for example, if you take a battery that is 10 amp hours in size, that would just mean if the battery had a C rate of one, that means over one hour, it's going to discharge or charge at a rate of 10 amps. So for that one hour, it's going to have a power or a current of 10 amps and it'll fill up or discharge the battery that is 10 amp hours in size. And yes, I know sometimes technically discharge rates are referred to as E rates and there are some losses in here. So this is like in a perfect theoretical battery. However, just stick with me, let's try to keep this simple. So to calculate the peak C rate for this new 4680 Model Y, we would just take the charging current, the max that it hit during the charging session, divided by the pack size, which is still an unknown more in a second. But the highest I saw was we'll say 206 kilowatts for a charging speed and now for the pack size. Here's a screenshot from Spoken Reviews. His car added 59 kilowatt hours, charging from 10% to 97%. So if you do the math to account for the other 13% of the usable battery capacity, that would have this pack size in the neighborhood of 68 kilowatt hours. Plugging that into our equation, using these assumptions, that will give us a peak C rates for this 4680 pack, of 3.03. .03. And yes, the higher the C rate means the faster the charge. For some context, looking at other peak C rates, this is what we just calculated. This in the white would be if this new 4680 Model Y was indeed a 50 kilowatt hour pack, but we just did the math proving that it's probably around 68 kilowatt hours, so I do not think this is the case, but hypothetically that would have a peak C rate of around 4.14, and comparing a 2170 Model 3 that has an 82 kilowatt hour pack that can charge up to 250 kilowatts that we've seen, that would have it at a peak C rate of 3.04, effectively in line with this new Austin made Model Y. However, we have to remember peak C rates are not the most important metric. It's going to be the average C rate over the course of the entire charging curve, which was the point I was trying to make yesterday that I could have done better. But the point being this new 4680 pack was only holding those peak rates for a matter of seconds. And I think we got some clarification. Maybe it's just me, but I asked on Twitter, does the Tesla UI display the kilowatt hours the battery pack actually received? Or is it the kilowatt hours the supercharger actually actually sent, thus including actual charging losses and inefficiencies. Tom Malogny, who does excellent work, I will link his stuff below, said it does not include charging losses. He'll have a video up about it soon. So this would lead us to believe it's actually the kilowatt hours the battery pack has received. And Kyle from Out of Spec, who also does excellent work, I love his stuff, said depends on the car. Some do show charger power through the port and energy added to the battery pack like Rivian, which is funny, but at least for Tesla, when supercharging, we'll take that kilowatt hour figure on the UI to be the energy into the pack, not including charging losses. Knowing that data is especially important when trying to figure out the pack size based on actual charge received during a supercharger session, which is part of why I do not think this new pack is 50 kilowatt hours. I think it's probably in the neighborhood of 70. And remember to help you in the future, 1C is the one hour that's the baseline, always work from there. The number next to the C is going to be the rate. So if you see 2C, that's going to be twice the rate as 1C, which would mean half the time. So this would be 30 minutes in terms of a charging rate from zero to full capacity. And conversely, working from the base, 0.5C is going to be half the rate or twice the amount of time. So that would be two hours from zero to fully charged. And lastly, bringing the capacity back into the equation, three quick examples of different C rates for a 10 amp hour battery. Remember, 1C is the baseline one hour, so charging over the course of one hour, it will deliver 10 amps in terms of current. Thus, 0.5C, remember that's going to be half the rate or half the current, which is amps, so half of that is of course five amps. 
So to fill up a 10 amp hour battery, that would take, yes, two hours. And to throw you off a bit, let's say you see 5C. Well, that's five times the current, five times as fast as 1C, which was 10 amps. So that's going to be, yes, 50 amps. And how long is it gonna take for that 50 amps to charge a 10 amp hour battery? Doing the math, that would be 0.2 hours. So yes, C rates are crucial and very important to understand. However, it's not just the peak C rate, it's really the average C rate over the course of the charging curve that we need to know. And we just don't have that data reliably yet from this one charging test. If you don't like mental math, yes, there are cheat sheets. Go ahead and take a screenshot. And in terms of the weight of the Model Y, so this is Tesla's website. The long range all wheel drive has a weight on the website, 4,363 pounds. Presumably this is going to be for the Fremont Model Y. In case you're curious, the performance jumps up to 4,398. Spoken reviews being a classy guy after people were asking went to weigh his Model Y on a cat scale, but now there's controversy. Was he standing on the pad when he pressed the button or was he not? He seemed to think that he was. So doing the math, removing his weight and two car seats in the back, that would put this 4680 Model Y at 4,220 pounds. So this data definitely seems questionable, but if we roll with it, that would be a 143 pound difference between the Fremont long range Model Y and the new 200 179 range 4680 Model Y out of Austin. So the takeaway from all of that, sure, maybe Spoken Reviews charging his 4680 Model Y for the first time was a bit slower than it will be in the future. Other users have reported that in the past. However, if you do the math calculating the C rate around the 20% mark, it was already down to around 144 kilowatts. Divide that by a usable capacity of around 68, that would give us a C rate of around 2.11, which would be the lowest on this chart. So for now, the 4680 charging curve is yes, still in my opinion, limited to some degree by Tesla. Definitely not blowing anybody's socks off, but it's also not terrible, it's just kind of whatever. Moving on, exciting news for many people eagerly awaiting Tesla deliveries. Now expanding into new markets, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore. So to all of you out there who have been waiting, well done, your time has come. Congrats to the Tesla team as they just installed the 35,000th supercharger in Wuhan, China. If you were confused by the wording of that post, yes, that's 35,000 globally, not just 35,000 in China. Looking at EV registration data in the United States through the first four months of the year, Tesla is still killing it. Ford in second, Kia in third, followed by followers. Jay in Shanghai shared this video of a tree falling on a Model 3. Apparently the person was in the car and they walked away unscathed. I don't know, but if you ask me, this is some of the best advertising right here. This tweet from Martin, I'm not sure how much stock to put into this, but based on VIN data from Berlin, we're looking at potentially more than 8,000 cars from Berlin in quarter two. I am sharing though, because Troy Tesla said, I like this. I'm not sure if Elon is trolling here, but when asked about when the next FSD beta is coming out, he said two weeks. It's funny because if you're not familiar, anytime Elon says two weeks, it typically works out to be, you know, two years, something that's not two weeks. So we'll wait and see. Tesla owner Silicon Valley shared this impressive roundabout maneuvering all the way around by Tesla FSD beta. In response, Elon said, we're going deep on roundabouts, should get noticeably better with 10.13. Here's an eye rolling report from Moneyball said, BYD on supplying Tesla with batteries. Now they have no comment after one of their executives just said they were excited to provide Tesla with batteries soon. And then he reports Tesla saying, we have not heard any news on BYD becoming a Tesla supplier. So what's going on here? The only thing I was able to find was tracked down by Sawyer. This is what Sawyer tracked down from Electric Potential and it says they consulted Tesla stakeholders who said we didn't hear this message. So if this is all we have, two tweets and this article, I'm not saying that BYD is not supplying Tesla. I'm going to assume they are and take the executive's words in a public interview over this, at least for now. Just an anecdote here, but we just talked about Tesla being set up for a record June month. And Chris Zhang said, Tesla China has placed orders with all of its major suppliers well in excess of what was scheduled for June, like 130% order for ESP modules from Bosch. If you're wondering what's up with the markets today, yes, inflation data came out this morning and it came in above expectations expectations. You're probably sick of hearing about this by now. I am too. Just so you know, overall came in up 8.6% year over year. And remember last May, it was already at 5%. So 
really not showing the signs of slowing down that everybody is looking for. And year over year, food at home up 11.9% and gasoline year over year up 48.7%. What does that mean in layman's terms? Well, at current prices, US households are spending $5,415 annually on gas versus 2,800 in March, 2021. So we'll probably get 50 basis point rate hikes at the June and July meetings back to back. And the truth is the market probably won't be in the green consistently like we want it to be until inflation is coming down steadily and is under control and people have confidence in that. And lastly, Lightyear just revealed the world's first solar car that is supposed to go into production this year and start deliveries later this year. As always, color me skeptical, but I will include a link to the video below if you want to check it out for yourself. That'll do it for today. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.